the Abscondo Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Abscondo Podcast. This is Mark. Today I'm going to talk about a pretty big topic, which is how will the world basically look now in this new reality, this new world order, this new earth that we find ourselves being forced into in a way. Now, if you believe that we're going back to normal after the lockdown is over, the quarantine is over, that's fine. This podcast probably isn't for you. I think this is more for people who kind of don't believe that's going to be the case because we recognize a certain level of insanity, a certain reality that we're living within. Um, The government officials sound pretty crazy. We can't believe they've just taken away our basic human rights, our basic freedom and things like this over a flu, whether it's a terrible flu or whether it's a normal flu, we don't really know. The media, you know, constantly trying to panic and get people to, to, to cave into fear. And, you know, all the institutions shutting down because of this um, are, you know, panicking or um, you know, companies cutting costs, you know, firing people and so forth. So we see the reality of what's happening. And I think a lot of us are thinking like, what's, you know, what's next? And there could be good reason to feel like you should be fearful, but I want to put forth an idea for, or like not an idea, it's not my idea, but a, a, um, you know, a vision of a, of a future. And I don't really believe that future is, a meaningful concept, but but we are talking about like where do we go from here now that the world has adjusted and the world is as it is, how do we live now and 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 adjust and carry that forward into a reality that is different from how it has been in our lives? So I believe that that what we're seeing is the collapse of of ideology. You know, we all know that in the past hundred years, we know that communism um, has proven to be um, ineffective as a an ideology and as a political system. Fascism, even before that, collapsed, and we had this sort of faith in in um, you know capitalism and socialism, which is kind of how every country in the world has been operating for well for the past let's say thirty years, and for most countries even a lot longer than that where you have this system of you know, corporations and businesses um, free to operate and do what they want for their own greedy, selfish purposes to make money. And you take tax revenue from that activity, from the corporation and from the employees and so forth. And that funds the socialist programs to take care of those who are less fortunate, who, who aren't contributing the value and so forth, and for health care and schools and things like this. The problem, I think, is that this reality led to a lifestyle that that didn't really give us what what the human soul wants and it wasn't really working that well just on the surface right what does our life look like under this system you know you spend you're born perfect right perfect love and then you are forced into first grade and for the next 20 years if you go to university for the next 20 years you're forced to learn concepts and ideas and ways of thinking that the state believes is important for you to learn. Why? So that you can get a job. You can become basically a slave to a job you do not really enjoy or a bunch of jobs you don't really enjoy um, for the purpose of, you know, paying off the debt that you almost have to get to, to buy a car and a house. And of course, paying taxes for the privilege of going to that school. So you spend 40 years doing something you don't want to do in the prime of your life, for the mo- most people do, or have been doing this, and you're paying taxes for health care, you're paying taxes, and of course in the U.S. you pay your, you pay private companies for your health care, but it's, a, it's actually a small difference, right, who you're paying for an institution that doesn't really work. Health care doesn't really have a solution to the flu, doesn't really have a solution for uh, to cancer, doesn't have a solution to a lot of things because it's not really about health and healing. That's your immune system. We've talked about this before. I'll skip over this part. But the point is, you're working to pay for these socialist programs. One of them is being your pension in old age. Now, your pension, congratulations, you're 65 years old or whatever, you get to retire. Now, you become essentially useless to everyone, and you become totally self-absorbed and worrying about how long you're going to prolong this life. And I would like to propose that this was never a very good lifestyle to begin with. And I think what happened is when the media started panicking about the, the COVID-19 
people kind of went along with it because we weren't really that happy with how the world was before. And it's really important to understand. Because we could have easily rejected that fear. We could have easily fought for what, what we loved so much before in the past, and we didn't do that. You know, we just kind of went along with this and said, okay, I give up. I, I just stay home and, and it's, that's fine. Now, okay, so here we are. So what are we going to do, right? On one hand, of course, the institutions are going to keep trying. They're going to try to go forward. They're going to try to um, provide some kind of, of, you know, emergency money for us. And that's wonderful. Um, you know, the, the politicians are going to try to do the best they can, which in their level of insanity, that's fine. But realistically, what are we talking about in terms of, I believe that socialism and capitalism, the ideologies have proven false. And the reason is because every ideology, every political ideology, is in, it's impossible to, to encompass the totality of reality. Reality is far too complex. The truth about life on earth and the universe is too complex for to fit into any neat ideology that can be run by, by, by a few people in charge of others. The very nature of that type of system is, is, is false because, because that means that the, the system has authority over people. And so you're placing authority externally to yourself. And when you do that, that's a false arrangement. You're looking for something external to save you. And that's inherently going to fail, especially because any kind of institution or any kind of system run by people is really designed, um, or it's run in such, in such a way that it serves the interests of those people. Whether it's communist Russia, obviously the communists running the system benefited more than the people. Whether it's you know, American democracy, obviously the politicians have such an inside track on things. They're doing just fine. The people are out there suffering. Whether it's a corporation, the corporation is concerned with its own greed, you know, which is what it's supposed to do. And the and people who are touched by the pollution or by uh, whatever, you know, side effects that come out of that system that, that harms people. So we really have to start questioning whether we can put our faith in external systems and authority. And that doesn't mean we're supposed to fight them. That doesn't mean that they're going to go away overnight. That's not going to be the case. What it does mean is that, is that if we're going to go forward, there has to be a, an individual awakening of some, of some kind. And that awakening does have to look at the realities of the world. What does the media, the news media, and the media in general what is its function? What is the function of school? What is the reality of a healthcare system? What is the reality of these lives that we have under the, these normal lives that we're expected to go forth and what we're teaching our children about their futures? Is it true? Is this, is this true? We do have to awaken to some truths about our lives, which ultimately is a drop in the bucket in the universe. It doesn't really matter what happens to me in my little life. Okay. But it's nice to, to look at to, to look at it honestly. Okay. Now, when you do this as an individual, you're also going to then uh, go through this process. Now, for me, it took many years to start. You know, during the Iraqi invasion back in 2001, 2002, right after 9/11, I started doing these questions and ask, asking these questions about the political system and about the realities. And your, your your first reaction is to go out there and protest and try to change it. And that's fine if you want to start there. That's fine. That's not going to work because these systems don't change based on based on our, our violent and a active criticism. They're pretty. <laughs> they they will fight until the death, you know, until they're they're going to change anything based on based on our our demands, right? And so you go through a period of of perhaps some kind of um, despair and and anger, even when you feel like the world's not fair. The world you were promised when you were little isn't the world that we live in. And then you go through, hopefully, you get to a point where you realize, like, okay, I, I surrender. This is the way it is. This is the reality of life. Now what am I going to do? And there is an opportunity when that happens to go look for the meaning of, of life and to awaken spiritually, to awaken to love as being the ultimate truth, not any ideology. Um, and, and, this, you know, and this is a personal journey. And right now in this world, more people than ever in the world have gone through this journey and have come out the other side and have spiritually awakened. You can call that different things, 
you know, but basically that's what a lot of people have done. And, and when you can do this with an understanding of the, of the, of the political realities, the economic realities, um, when you have some skills to offer people in, in your, in your personal, in your profession and so forth, and then you go through a spiritual awakening. Now you can begin to, to live in a way that is very, that looks the same, looks very similar to everyone else, but it's, it's very different. And if enough people do this, that's what's called a consciousness revolution. Okay. The consciousness revolution is not something that happens out in the streets. There's not going to be anybody throwing anything or yelling anything. It's a, it's a silent, quiet thing that happens within our, within our inner states. And when enough people go through this, society will start to reshape. But the goal isn't for the external society to reshape. That's not the goal. The goal is for you personally to go through this, your own awakening, and then to help others around you and, and extend that awakening as far as you can to other people, and then for them to do the same thing. And I want to talk about what this looks like. This this new, and it's not. It's beyond ideology. We're talking about living according to truth. There's no political spectrum anymore. There's no left wing or right wing. There's love or there's not love. I want to suggest that the thought system, the actions, the the the, the state of being, which is loving, is. And I'm wildly optimistic about the future when you put it this way, because this is like what we've been waiting for. This is like the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is like the undoing of ego. This is like the world healing completely. And so I'm, I'm super excited about this topic because this is everything. There is no real revolution except for the consciousness revolution. Because any other thought system that tries to come in and replace another one, any kind of ideology that comes in and tries to replace another one, call it progressive or call it green or whatever, it's going to fail because it's an externalized truth that doesn't quite fit the reality, the complexity, the totality of reality and how human beings, who we really are, what we really need, what we really want, how we actually behave, how we actually think, there's no ideology that's going to address all that for everyone. And so it falls short and it ultimately fails. And these systems do crumble because they're artificial. They're going to continue with these systems, but, but as you awaken, you learn to withdraw your attention to the extent possible. So you stop paying attention to every detail or to any detail. Ideally, you don't watch any news. Um, ideally, you, you may or may not even vote you know, but if you do vote, it shouldn't take you more than five minutes to figure out who to vote for. You sure wouldn't go around arguing about which politician is better, which party is better, because they're both illusions. They're both based on lies. Why would you argue? Why would you spend your, your conscious attention and your energy getting worked up over a fiction? One fiction is less fictional than the other. It doesn't matter. They're both fiction. Okay. So the consciousness revolution is a massive number of people, eventually the majority of people in, in the world, and what's cool is that it's going to be the world because it, this touched every single country in the world. And that's important because for, for real change to happen in this interconnected technolo technological world, it does have to be everywhere. Otherwise, you, do, you would just have the economies moving somewhere else. This is going to touch every country. There's going to be a global awakening and a consciousness revolution. And I talk about this because this is something that I went through about five years ago, I went through my little awakening and I started living according to this this way of being where, you know, where you're sort of detached from the so-called, uh, you know, the real world, as people used to say. Um, and there are certain ways of, of approaching life that that do free you from, from the external systems that allow you to thrive, that allow you to solve problems, that allow you to to, to find abundance and in, in financially as well as um, in every area of your life, your time, um, and, and to feel good and be healthy and all these things that we want. And to do that, you don't need a healthcare system. You don't need a strong economy. How many people do you know who are happy because the economy is strong? Truly happy, like not up and down, but like truly happy. How many people do you know that are truly healthy because... The healthcare system works so wonderfully. I don't know any. I don't go to the doctor. I've been to the doctor for, I don't know, 12 years. And I'm healthy. I don't need a doctor to agree with that. I know I'm healthy. And 
I haven't had a job for for nine or ten years. I live in Slovakia as an American. I speak some Slovak, but I'm you know. So what I'm trying to suggest is that is that by adopting this perspective, by realigning your thinking along with consciousness, along with your spiritual awakening and love, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You're going to find a way. Uh, you're going to find a way to thrive. And when we do this, and we speak the truth. Those systems, those illusions, those false authorities begin to lose their grip and are exposed. But that's not the point. That's not the goal. It doesn't matter. What matters is what's in here. So it's a, it's a freeing message because it is entirely up to you. You don't have to wait for there to be a revolution to get started. In fact, this is the time to get started because... Right now, we still have some of those old comfortable things from the previous era. We still have the checks coming from the government. We still have, some of us have a job in healthcare or essential jobs like this. And that may not last forever because without that business revenue, with a you know, huge decline in, in, in business revenue coming in as tax revenue to the government, they may not be able to continue. So we should all be thinking about what we're going to do after these systems do collapse. And if they don't collapse, that's fine because that just makes it easier. But you can live according to these principles even if they even if things do go back to normal. And it's a way better way to live. It's like so much better way to live. So what does it look like? You know? Well, it's strange because because people are always waiting for something externally to change before things can be okay. But this is a decision to say now, in this very moment, things are okay. I look outside the window and it looks okay. There's still the same trees and, and everything and the dogs barking and everything else. And it's okay. I feel okay. I'm comfortable. I have food today. So it starts with an awareness that in the present moment, everything is okay. Now, if you turn on the news, you're, gonna, you're not going to feel that way. So don't turn on the news, right? Don't debate someone about politics. You know, now is the time to do some reading or I prefer audiobooks. And, and writing also is wonderful. But um, if you really want to learn the thought system of perfect love or God's love, unconditional love, which I'm proposing, which is not my opinion, which is the truth, is the correct thought system, the only true thought system, because it's the answer to every question. It's the solution to every challenge is the loving response. And there's no downside to love. There's no, there's no side effect. And the only thing is, it does require that we let go of ego. We have to escape the ego because the ego is the opposite of love. The ego is run by fear. And the ego does certain things and acts in a certain way. It attacks, it shames, it believes in guilt, it believes in sinners. And it believes that, that we can put together a cool system that is that is better than reality. We can make our own reality and that, that the laws of nature are, can be not real somehow. The ego is filled with crazy, insane thoughts and, and, and will seek solutions but never quite get there, never quite solve them, and I always believe the next one is going to be the one or that this person, this politician is going to be the one. This idea is going to save the world even though it's quite obvious that no one's going to, not everyone's going to agree and go along with it. Let's get real. So, if you do want to awaken, um, there are a couple books that come to mind that I think are, are that I know are worth your time. Well, first of all, the stuff that I put out—I mean, my book Beloved, it's on it's on Kindle, Amazon Kindle, it's also on freeebooks.net. Just come to my blog of scandal.com, and you can link to that and read that. And that explains the difference. You know, what is love? What is perfect love? And what is the opposite of perfect love? So you have some understanding of what that means and what love is and what do, love does, because we don't. People don't really understand what love actually is. We've abused that word, just like we've abused the word God in our lives. People use the word love to, to as a, as an, you know, talk about a relationship that is not even loving, a, a, depend, a codependent relationship. That's not love. Love is something different. Love is, well, you have to read, you have to read the book. Love you know, extends from within. It, it starts with self-love. And then extends to, to your family, but also to the whole world and, and every creature. And every love is like a way of, of being each moment. You can also read um, Eckhart Tolle, Power of Now or a New Earth. 
and he talks a lot about the ego. He doesn't really get into specifically love, but if you understand the ego, what's left is perfect love. And the other book I would recommend is A Course in Miracles, because this this is like the source. This is like uh, the, the clearest teaching on, on what on how to escape the ego and align with perfect love. You can also watch my Treetops documentary and just read anything that I put out because this is what I'm this is what it's all about. And I'm not trying to plug my my content because it's all free, so I'm not getting any benefit from this. I'm just trying to to help share what I've learned. So when we align align our thinking and and your your prayer to if you believe in God your prayer is just you know may i align with your love your perfect love which is the energy of life fear is death fear is darkness fear is a slide toward death and anytime you're afraid of external authority um you're you're responding to fear which is of the ego and your 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 love gets blocked um Love has a way, and I use love, you know, as th- to mean the same thing as, as again, life energy, as, as awakening, as inspiration. Love has a way of creating perfect health, um, giving you energy. Love is energy. Love is the energy of, of God perceived by humans. And love is what inspires us to serve other people. And this is a fundamental thing, is that no matter what's happening in the world, in the economy, we've all got to start thinking, like, what value can we create for other people? And what is the greatest amount of value that I can create for other people or other businesses or whatever it may be? Because we're on this planet. we we got to pay our rent here. We can't just expect the government to take care of us. And so we have to understand what can I do that is valuable to someone else? What, you know, what is it that someone else is going to pay for or that someone else is going to do me a favor in return and start shifting in that direction? Even as, even as some of the old structures are still present, how do we move in that direction? You know, and you do need to interact with the existing system, you know, get a business license, a bank account and things. There are things that, that you have to deal with it's not this ideological thing like I'm so pure I don't need to follow any rules. You have to deal with the institutions and the laws. Of course you do. But there has to be a shift. How do I extend my value? Is it the beauty you create? But get real about it. Who's going to really pay for it or care? Right? Usually it's a service you provide to someone or a product you, that they really would buy. And it's a business of some kind. Or, or if you're, you know, a trainer or a spiritual teacher or a life coach, if you really think that that what you have to say people are going to pay for, go for it. But there's got to be some focus on, on how am I creating, creating, and creating is all about life. Life and love is creation. So extending creation, being godlike within, you know, extending that divinity within us through our own creations, just as God does. That's what life is. That's that's what awakening is. So creation and everything we say and do and think actually is creating, whether it's negative or positive. If you're a negative complainer and everything is wrong, I can't believe this, you're going to be extending or creating that lesson, that false lesson of what, how not to live, how not to align with reality. So when you shift your thinking to love and only love, you're creating such beauty and truth and, and value that you you do get paid, you do get invited in. You know, I, I take these attitudes of love. I, I run a sales agency, and I'm very easily able to find new new clients because I have you know calls with with perfect strangers, and I'm j- I just show up as myself, my loving self, trying to create value and and help them and explain who I am and how I approach things, and they hire me, and I set my price and it pays for for everything that I need, and. So love does pay the rent, you know. That's all that does. If you're because if you're if you're greedy and you're trying to get something from someone, they're not going to pay you. Who would you rather hire? Somebody who's loving and doing a great job and being kind to you, someone you can trust, or someone who's greedy trying to screw you? Now the ego would tr- would say that you're being screwed. You have to try to get what you want. You know that's not the way to do business. The way to do business is to be loving and try to actually help people. 
to care about them as human beings. And same thing, you know, you should be thinking also, in the worst case scenario, this whole, the whole system falls apart. Where are you going to live? Do you, do you have a network of people? Do, how's your family relationship with your parents or your, or your siblings, your adult siblings? You know, start thinking about love in a way that build bridges to, to your future, which, again, future is a debatable term. What are you going to do if and when things fall apart? Where are you going to live? And if, if you're not being loving to as many people as possible, your options may not exist and you may not survive. It's just a simple fact. So love helps you thrive today. It helps you thrive in a, in a healthy economy, whatever that means. <laughs> and it also helps you survive and even thrive when things get difficult for other people. Now, it might sound difficult to live according to love, awakened as part of this consciousness revolution, but it's not. It's actually diff- difficult to go through life, you know, carrying shame and guilt and attacking people and being greedy and lying and manipulating and, and, and believing in all these systems and having fear that they're going to go away. To have this world of illusion that you carry around in your head, it weighs on your shoulders and it makes you ill and it makes you crazy. That's not easy. What's easy is just being loving all the time because you know what love is. Well, you're going to know what love is when you, when you actually study this stuff a little bit. And then you realize that, that you've been released from all that and it's the easiest way to live in the world. It's so easy. And you may think that it means you have to like always sacrifice yourself. Oh, no, no, no. There's no sacrifice in love. Not, not God's love. Does God sacrifice to make you? Do, does he give only energy to you and, and, and withdraw from someone else? You can be loving and you do the best you can. You, you do whatever inspires you. You're not going to save the world with your love. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to go out and, and, and feed every homeless person in your town unless that's what you feel inspired to do. But when you're aligned with love, when you're awakened, um, it's important that you always feel good. So there's no sacrifice. Never sacrifice. Sacrifice is giving up what you do want, which is to feel good, for what you don't want, which is to feel tired and exhausted and grumpy. No more sacrifice. So that's pretty cool, right? Do what you can. Do what you feel inspired to do. Respond to things lovingly, but don't. But you don't have to to force anything. Okay, it's a state of being. Nobody needs you to do all that. They just need you to be okay. Because when you are okay, your thoughts are okay. And you're extending what's true. You're extending the real answer, which is the loving response. You're creating beauty. You're solving real problems. And you don't need to do it alone. You can Because by, by teaching love, by teaching perfect love, by teaching spiritual awakening, in whatever language or words you want to use to do that, you are teaching others to do the same and then to extend that. So it can be a very effortless kind of easy process and this is how it happens it's not going to be one person one centralized person you know rising up and teaching everyone it's going to be an organic movement this consciousness this consciousness revolution and at the conclusion of this as we as we fully realize this revolution what's going to happen is that all the various faiths of the world the mormons and the christians and the muslims and the hindus and the and the atheists or the, you know the, the 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 new age people and the and the Taoists, we're all going to to look at one another and say like ah oh, we get it we're all talking about the same thing we're talking about unconditional acceptance and forgiveness we're talking about a truth that goes beyond our physical form we're talking about our spirit we're talking about our essence we're talking about consciousness we're all awakened and we're all accepting one another. And I've already started to do this with some Mormons and it's beautiful. We sit and just agree on everything even though we have different words and we both grow in our faith. We meet every week. It's wonderful. And it's not about arguing about whose, whose institution is, is, is better or correct. It's about, it's about the truth that all this stuff points to. And we're going to live there. The consciousness revolution is we're going to live in truth. And we're going to, when we see fiction, we're going to say it's fiction. That's it. We're just going to say it. And it's enough because the truth exposes the false. The truth exposes the false. False. You know, you don't have to, you, don't, you can protest if you enjoy protesting. That's fine. But that's more of an, an ego pleasure. It's more like a, a high of like this fight you're picking. And that's fine if you want to do that. But it, it's probably not the way. All you have to do is speak the truth about something and others will see it and others will repeat it. And not, and not everyone has to come along. You're responsible for, your, for yourself. 
you know, and, and, you know, so we talked about these ideologies failing, the socialism, fascism, communism, and capitalism failing. And you might think, well, you know, what else, how else could you structure society? Well, think about life before that. Think about life in the early 1800s or 1700s. There was no system. There were people, good people, doing their best, you know, trying to build a community, trying to help each other, trying to make a little bit of money, build a house, take care of their family, love their neighbor, go to church, whatever. And we're going back to something like that. Only this time we've got like amazing technology. It's amazing technology we have. And we can do this. You know, not everyone's going to make it. But through our love, we're going to try to save everyone. We're going to try the best we can. And those institutions will help also and, and so forth. It's not, it's not black and white, this stuff, but, but love, you know, the, the world's functioning is not going to be black and white, but that's just the nature of the world. Why should it be? What is black and white is that you're either loving or you're not loving. Every action, every thought, every deed, every word, every response to anything, any challenge or any person, either it's the loving response which is the correct response every single time beyond debate. Nobody debates this stuff. Or it's not loving. In which case it is an error, which might be called a sin. And the only correction to error is to correct error. <laughs> so you so if you make a mistake, if you if you do respond in a way that isn't loving, if you do argue with someone, debate someone, and attack someone or shame someone or cause some kind of negative emotion or fear. You apologize. If someone does it to you, you forgive. It doesn't mean you have to be subject to them, but you have to forgive the truth in them by seeing past that error, maybe pointing it out. And it's a, it's a wonderful way to live. It allows you to maximize your potential in life. It about allows you to be you in every area of life, to be honest in every area of your life, from your work to your family to your friendships to your community. You can be one person, and it's amazing. And if you're loving, everyone accepts it. Everyone loves it. I guess, I, I guess I'll probably leave it at that. It's kind of a strange ending, I guess. But as I said, a huge topic. But this is it. This is it. Love is the revolution. It's the only revolution. It's quiet. No one's going to notice it's happening. It already is happening. And we can allow the fiction to do what fiction does and withdraw attention and align with the thought system and the feeling and the energy and the way of life, which is perfect love. I'll leave you with an abscondo song. It's from the Treetops uh, album, and it's called Perfect Stillness Being. Thank you so much for joining me in the Abscondo Podcast. I've been living in a time when all my friends and I are seeing through the lies, deceiving, yet we kept believing this whole time. And here's the big surprise through these eyes. We're seeing perfect stillness being so alive. We have nothing to hide. Do do do. And you are waking up to find how it feels to be alive to everything inside. You see, we exist in freedom this whole time. And here's the big surprise We don't need the lies Do 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 We reach and deep inside To the place we still hide To leave the past behind Leaving what we have been dreaming this whole time And here's the big surprise We had nothing to hide Do 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 do
Be alive. 